I think it's some kind of sickness, some kind of plague. But this is an international thing, and we really need to pray against this. We really need to pray against this right now. It's a, it's like a plague trying to develop in the world. But it is a disease. It's some kind of plague, some kind of, I'm searching for the word. It's, it's not quite a plague. It's, not, it's, it's a something, it's like a pestilence all an epidemic maybe, yes. Coming is trying to develop. People are gonna take great advantage of this. This is not good. So we stop it where it is right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. I saw an aircraft disaster, but I saw a missile blow one in half. Fox News alert now, a Ukrainian jet crashing in Iran minutes after takeoff yesterday, killing all 176 people on board. It was brought down by an Iranian missile, according to U.S. sources who were talking with NBC News. The Lord said to us, meet me in the temple at the 11th hour.
welcome everybody into the 11th hour. This is the time we move into the future and through the future. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and thank our God all over the world, wherever you're watching from. We want to thank our God and give him praise and honor and glory for he is good. His mercy endures forever and ever and ever. Oh, mighty God, we thank you. I'm reminded of that old prayer. Remember, oh, mighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon you. Remember, we used to pray that in the classrooms in this nation. Lord, we give you praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving. For you are God, and beside you there's no other forever. You are God, and beside you there is no other forever. We acknowledge you as our King.
Hallelujah. Blessing be upon your house. Blessing be upon your children. Blessing be upon your children's children, says the Lord. Blessing be upon you. Reach out and receive the blessing this day. Reach out with your hands symbolically and say, I receive the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord that makes you rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. The blessing of the Lord be upon your house, upon your family, upon your storehouse, upon you. Hallelujah. Blessing of the Lord, blessing of the Lord our God. We speak the blessing, the blessing of the Lord. Blessing of the Lord our God forever. Lift your hands up and bless the Lord all over the world. Come on, wherever you are. If it's where you can, raise your hands and bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. they're watching today I ask you to move in and tabernacle among them Lord right now I ask you to move into the households where there are sick children move into that household Lord and set down among them tabernacle among them and your very presence begin to push this thing out of their homes out of their living rooms we speak the name of Jesus Jesus the name above all names that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father Philippians 2 9 10 and 11 Lord we speak this word over the people over their children over their homes. Right now I speak to those who are struggling with no job, 
They have no work, Lord, to have an income for their family. I ask you now to supernaturally move upon those households. Supernaturally move on their behalf. That they will be on people's minds. Not to only bless them with financial blessings and provision needed, but that jobs will be provided. Employment, income, Lord. That those honest hands can work and do and have seed to sow for you. And I give you praise and honor for it. And we command the spirit of hell to take its hands off your household. Right now in the name of Jesus, you spirit of depression, turn them loose. Turn them loose now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, lift your hands, say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. is good and his mercy endures forever and ever I can tell you this trouble is not at your house to stay because we command it to make its exit today in the name of Jesus angelic host Go forth and fight for the people. Yes, Lord, I will. The Lord said to tell you that your best days are just ahead of you. Your best days. And here is a saying I hear that people say, and your best life is just ahead of you. For life is not meant to be burdensome and pushed down and oppressed for the Lord brought you life that you may have life and have it more abundantly and the abundant life is in Christ Jesus and all that he paid for when he died on the cross went into hell rose again after three days and nights seated at the right hand of God the Father and now he is making intercession for you and me. And his intercession is this. I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. To give you an expected end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Well, wherever you are, can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Come on. Just give him a shout of praise. Come on and let's lift it up just a little bit. Come on while the people shout, while they shout.
movement and around the perimeter of the of the paper it just started fire just it just ignited in fire and then all of a sudden it was a map and it, it looked like the way the show Bonanza used to come on when the fire yeah. and the and I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that the Holy Ghost fire was moving all across all across the states the states it was specific to say the states and that we are going to see going into 2021 a big big revival of the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. Hallelujah. and you know when you said states just like that I heard this also it's moving across states of mind people's state of mind Prosperous mind arising. I see a prosperous thoughts appear. I see a prosperous mind arising. 2021 is your new year. I see a prosperous mind arising. I see a prosperous thoughts appear. I see a prosperous mind. A prosperous mind, a prosperous mind, a prosperous mind in your new year. Prosperous mind. No more depression. No more.
21. I know people say, well, you mean you dare say we're going to have some fun in 21? No. God said we're going to have some fun in 21. Don't you think there ought to be a little fun in 21? Some people think 20 came right out of hell. Well, there was plenty in 20. Plenty of good, plenty of bad, plenty of prosperity, and plenty of sad. There was plenty, 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 plenty in the year 2020. It was the year of plenty. the Lamb of God. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise, a hand clap of praise, a shout of praise for letting us know these days. Hallelujah. 2020, one, two, three, and four. How about that? Hallelujah. 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 And I know people would say, well, man, that's pretty bold to talk about all the way to 24. Yeah, I know the Lord's bold like that. He just says things. He just says things, and sometimes he just leaves you standing there surprised <laughs> because I wasn't thinking about all of that. Hallelujah. But I think the Lord is wanting to bring his people some hope and bring them some excitement and bring them things that, that they will absolutely as gifts in the year. Amen. Let's lift our hands and thank our God. Come on, we'll bless Him. We'll thank Him. We give Him honor and praise and glory and thanksgiving. 
be unto our God. Hallelujah. Let me start right here with this. You know, um, you know, inside, inside Jacob was Israel. Inside every man is a spark. <clears throat> God sp spoke to that Israel inside Jacob, that spark known as Israel. And it still exists today when God spoke to that spark. Imagine your spark has a name. Are you listening? Your spark has a name. Your spark has a name, it has a title, it has a future, it has everything. That spark that God placed on the inside of you. When did that spark come? Well, this, the particular spark I'm talking about came at conception, at your conception. You know, there is a spark, and it's been proven now on video. There is a spark of electricity uh, when when that seed and that egg collide, it lights up and it's just a spark like a light flashes. It's God. God has, has come to visit your baby shower. He's come. The spark has to be recognized. God recognizes it. And watch this. He tries all your and my life to get it from the inside of you to the outside of you. That spark he put in there when you were conceived. He tries all of your life to get that in, uh, that's in you on the out, to the outside of you. You know, let me say it this way. You know, they say this, and I was watching this on a science thing, and they said that, that um, even in, in mice, when the seed and egg collide, there's a spark that takes place. What is that? Well, it's the Lord. The Lord has deposited everything in that mouse to be a mouse to its full ability. And, you know, they can do, they can do things that you'd, never, <laughs> that you'd never dream they could do. They get their they get their head through a hole, their whole body will go through that hole. They'll get in your house when you think your house is airtight. And they can, you know, but everything in that spark to be the fullest mouse it could be was put there. <clears throat> and the mouse don't have any, any qualms about being a mouse. He don't have anything in his thinking that hinders him from being that mouse. So he just climbs up walls, climbs up trees, can outrun cats, can do all this kind of stuff. He can just do these things because, you know, his mind don't talk him out of it. Now, in a human, which is far above a mouse, Jesus said a human is far above a sparrow. He said, you're worth many sparrows. So when that spark came into you, everything it it, that it takes for you to be all the you, the success and the human and everything that you're supposed to be able to do was put in that spark. The only thing, the, en the enemy knows this. He knows that it's hard to talk a mouse out of it because his brain is so tiny. But he can get into a human's head and start talking them out of being what God called them to be. And they get to thinking in their mind, I can't do this. I can't do this. Why, well, I can't have that kind of income. Why, well, I can't marry this kind of person. I can't have a new life. All my family's, oh, my family's been poor for all these. Yeah and, yeah, and all of them were hindered in their thinking. Because at that conception, God visited you. Now, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I, as we say, I'm, I'm endeavoring to get this across here. So he recognized and tries, his, he tries all your life 
to get on the inside of you, from the inside of you to the outside, what he put in there. The enemy sees that spark flash in the middle of the darkness. Now, you have to understand something. With the darker something is, I know people say, well, we were born in sin, Brother Robin. Yes, that's true. Everyone was born in sin when they were born with a sin nature. But in the darkness, that flash is really seen. It's really seen because you could, you could turn off everything until it's dark as the inside of a dinosaur. And then suddenly spark, one little spark of light and you couldn't hide it. I don't care what you do. And so when that spark comes, the enemy also saw that spark. Now you have to remember something. He sees the spark in the darkness he knows that spark will be motivated forward and will be recognized by the creation if it can ever get outside. See, all of creation recognizes what God has called you to do. And if he can get a dark heart to use that spark for him, then he can actually use the power of light to get the things he wants. Did you understand that? Did, you, did everybody get that? That if he can get, if he recognizes that spark. Now, if he can keep that person away from Jesus all their life, that ability and that one little spark is still there. You see, a lot of people use that on the dark side. And so the enemy knows that if he can ever get use of that spark without you using it for God, then he will use the power of light to get the things he wants. So he can use it to manipulate, to do things that spark was not, that that spark was not meant to be used for. As electricity can be used by the good or the dark or the bad, so can the spark inside you. You see a lot of musicians, actors, gifted people, creative people, so forth, even in the business world or any other part of life, they're using their sparks for darkness, for one, for their own fulfillment. Yet that spark was meant to be used for God's purpose and God's plan. So the way that happens on the, you'll never know what that spark was made to, what he brought to you that day. You'll never know it till it's fullest. I've watched guitar players and musicians that are absolutely, I mean phenomenal playing. Just almost phenomenal. And they don't even acknowledge God. The enemy's got them acknowledging the universe and the, the energy that comes out of plants and all this kind of stuff, some kind of new age thing, and yet he's, that's, that talent they have did not come from the enemy. The enemy's using that spark for his own good, and he'll use it inside what he, or his own plan, inside what he wants, and some of the best hidden lights in all the world are hidden in very dark places like nightclubs and bad movies and, and, and uh, bad dark songwriting and, and, and dark business dealings and, and all kind of manipulative banking and all this kind of stuff. And all these were gifted people. So you have to guard that spark of life. And the, the way you come to know that is to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because watch this. St. John chapter 1. And I want to show you this before we get into some more of this today. I hope you're enjoying this today. I hope you're getting a lot out of it. In St. John chapter 1, listen to this. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by Him, the Word, Jesus. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not, or could not hold it down and seize on it. 
And the word, verse 14, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So nothing could hide that spark he came and brought you. Now he wants to bring it out of you. And if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's just as simple as believing in your heart that he died for you and believe that God raised him from the dead and confess with your mouth that he's Lord. Say, Jesus, I believe you're Lord. I believe you died for me and rose from the dead. And from this day forward, I make you my Lord. And you know, when you do that, you walk in from the darkness. You're translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. And now every gift that was placed in you, God can start bringing that out. And you'll start seeing and doing things you never dreamed you could do. Hallelujah. So I I want to encourage you today. To walk in the light as he is in the light. Feed on the word. Talk about the word. Start talking about the plan of God. God said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. To give you an expected end. Hallelujah. And there's not any darkness, according to St. John 1, that can ever hold that down and seize on that. And keep you from coming into your call. And into your future. Hallelujah. That's what some of this is. When you suddenly travel into the future. Like we're singing about that song. Moving through the future. Moving through the future. When suddenly you travel into the future. And you see yourself doing something. That you've never done before. You see yourself in a destiny. What you've done is seen the Israel. That was inside you. you so to speak. You saw what you were called to be. And your fulfillment and destiny. And God's plan. And then suddenly you came back to this present moment. And you said, my God, I remember the future. I remember what I saw. And now, Lord, show me how to walk on into this. That is where he's calling you to be. Hallelujah. Some of you absolutely will hear this and you'll be extremely wealthy in one year from today. This time next year. (laughs) Hallelujah. Say, why are you laughing, prophet? Well, Because prophets laugh when everybody cries, and they cry when everybody laughs because they always see what's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today I'm operating some in the mantle with this mantle of apostle, talking about establishing a teaching and a foundation. Hallelujah. Now, if I can get you, Robin, to come to the keyboard, there's some words of prophetic words that I want to give today. And the Lord has spoken to me some things i hope you got something out of that uh, our time is so it's not real long here on the 11th hour i mean you know we could probably just keep pushing it and the lord would give us all day but i want you to um, i want you to just enter in with me for a few moments yes i will lord i'll do it that way if that's what you want to do <clears throat> Now, early this morning, I guess around 2.30, 2.35, something like that, I started moving through time. And the Lord had me, uh, He gave me that song this morning, Moving Through Time. And um, last night, or early this morning, I started moving through time. What do I see? I see men buzzing like bees. As I was moving through time. I could hear myself as the Lord was talking to me. I had my eyes closed and I was moving through time. And I heard myself say, moving, I'm moving through time. What do I see? The Lord said, I see men buzzing like bees. I see Germany in the spotlight. Uncovering corruption in Germany. There's going to be an uncovering of corruption in Germany. God has people there, precious people there, and it is time 
that this is uncovered. I saw an uncovering in Germany. I heard the name Michael and I heard the name Gino. I believe I'm saying that right. And then as I moved through time, I saw four men sitting at a table talking. What can we do to destroy the American president, they said. What can we do? I heard them say, we will use our influence in media, in governments. Oh, but I heard the Lord say, but one of you will be taken down. And then like a three-legged horse, you will limp. For this harvest, the Lord said, he said for a, this harvest that's coming, talking about the Lord, he said, for I will cripple you, says the Lord. It's the harvest. When you see the word Lord, it's talking about a harvest that's coming for something they've sown. Lord, all capitals, is God in his system of harvest, giving harvest to seed. He said, you will be crippled trying to run a race. I saw a court case and a loss and the four is now three. Guard your mouth, says the Lord, for I hear every word you say. I heard these things, see, moving through time. Then I heard, is the Mormon church against my trumpet? For you have blown the trump in my face. And I heard, look to the steadiness of Pence. For it has begun now, says the Lord. Then I heard, are the great lakes quiet? Lift up your voices and shout, says the Lord. Shout! People throw the word Gitmo around. But I'll show you something about that, says the Lord. He said, pray for rain. You're going to need it. Utah, I heard, is shaky. It is all just beginning in Iran. I saw Joe Biden bow his eyes in shame in the earth as the Lord spoke to him. In a lot of ways, it will end. And in a lot of ways, it will begin. Watch for the beginning, and you will see the ending. This is something I saw local. Something here. I saw, yeah, I'll just leave that for now. But then I saw, moving through time, an assassination attempt on a mayor in America. The Lord said, pray. So, Lord, we pray against an assassination attempt on a mayor in this country. I pray, Lord, that it be turned in Jesus' name. I saw turmoil in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and Tuscumbia, Alabama. 
calamity in Calcutta. As ancient spirits are called out to battle by the Lord. Lord, we pray for Calcutta. I pray, Lord God, that the oil and the wine, your people there, will, will tower above any calamity. In Jesus' name. I saw a farce in Fresno and a freak storm in the Dakotas. And a storm in Stockholm. Stockholm. Scotland is in the Lord's vision and mind right now. I heard something about Scotland. We need to pray and lift Scotland up. We need to lift that nation up for these things are precious to the Lord and I heard Madrid and an uncovering in Madrid and then I saw something that woke me up out of a sleep that got me up to start with I saw volcanic activity it was big and it was huge and I see lava flowing and I saw unrest in plates shifting I saw poles changing physically and politically so Lord we we pray this volcanic activity Lord I pray that it be minimized, Lord, for soon it will be seen and there will be a great melting. And Lord, I pray that it will be minimized and we come against anything, Lord, that would try to destroy your people. Lord, let it be seen when it happens that your hand was there to deliver. We lift up Scotland, Lord. That Scotland be protected from wickedness around it and from ancient wickedness in the midst of it. Lord, that your light will shine like never before. And I heard the word Ireland. I heard that while I'm standing here. And I heard Ireland. And I heard there's a, there's a fight going on in Ireland. There's a fight in the spirit, a fight for revival and a fight for the occultic coming trying to stop something God is going to do in Ireland. But it's going to happen there. It's going to happen on the shores of Ireland. It's going to happen in the green fields. It's going to happen in Ireland. God is going to have a revival and it will move from Ireland to Scotland and move back and forth and it will begin to be an outpouring Watch for events to start in Scotland. But the Lord says, events that are not good, He did not do them. Hallelujah. So I heard these things as I moved through time. And then I heard the name Keegan. Keegan. Maybe Coogan, but I think it's Keegan. Hallelujah. And I heard the name Getz. Getz. G E T T S. Getz. And then my mind put Rabbi with this. Rabbi, maybe Getz. Lord, I pray for this person that you will use them greatly and that they will be your mouthpiece and they will reveal Jesus hallelujah 
Then I heard robust economy. There's a robust economy coming. It's going to be a robust economy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Ireland is watching today. Hallelujah. I pray, I pray this blessing over Ireland. There is a great revival that was seated there years and years and years ago. And the Lord has not forgotten the harvest. It is going to happen. Hallelujah. But it's, it's competing right now and fighting with these ancient uh, occultic spirits that tried to take God's land there. They'll not win. Hallelujah. We decree and declare they'll not win. Now concerning the election, I saw this. I, I didn't say anything the other day, but I think this was on December the 4th. And I saw our military in the U.S. on the move. And I heard crashing glass as if we raided something. As if we raided some kind of facility. This was on December 4th I heard that. I think it's the fourth the best I can tell because the third was the entry before it. And so I heard that. And then I got a report yesterday that may have been the fulfillment of that. So take these prophetic words and war with them. Take them and war with them. Because God has your future planned. Your future. Remember this. Anything you hear about things like this, calamity and things like that, that is not God's plan for you as His people. He is bringing this to your attention so that you and I can pray. You know, Bob Jones said something years ago. He said, when an event comes and, and a prophet sees it coming, he said, you, you can't always stop the event, but you can sometimes beat the death out of it. Just beat the death out of it. And so that's why he brings this up. In the songs we heard earlier, the Lord gave his plan for you and I. It is going to be a great time for you. I saw somebody watching right now. Somebody has a crippled daughter. I saw your daughter in a wheelchair. Begin to pray over that daughter right now. Lay your hands on them. And right now I speak life into that, into that daughter. Life into their limbs. Life into their neurotransmitters. Life into their very being. In Jesus' name. And Lord, let them see the cloud the size of a man's hand. Hallelujah as this thing turns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you watching now, you're going to have to throw yourself into the things of God. Into these kind of power things. There has to be a time you throw yourself into the power things of God. The things where God is wanting to bring you up and bring out of you what He's put in you. God absolutely has better for you than you've ever seen or you've ever imagined. He has a future for you that's as bright as it's possible for God to make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just thank the Lord today and see if there's anything else He wants us to say today. For this has been a day of days to me. It's been a special day, I think. I think it's been a special day in the spirit. Music, words, teaching, everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That name Keegan keeps coming up to me. The name Keegan or Coogan, I think it's Keegan. Someone wrote in about a wheelchair. Really, her daughter was in the hospital in Finland. She's from Finland. And her daughter's in a wheelchair now. Oh, well, right now we speak life. We speak life. Life to this precious soul this precious daughter 
I wish I knew how old that daughter was. If somebody could tell me. Yeah, there's, there's a lot I, I realize writing in, and it's kind of hard sometimes, but I heard these things. And I heard someone has two daughters, and your two daughters, the young one has influence over the older one. And the Lord is moving, going to move in that younger daughter's life because right now she seems giddy and, and giggly and, and, and everything. But she is a call vessel unto me, says the Lord, and I am going to use her. And that daughter, I think, is blonde-haired. And I'm going to use her, the Lord says. And I am going, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. She might have been blonde haired. And now she's something else. <laughs> she has another color. And so, but the Lord said, I'm going to use her. And I'm going to use her to influence the older one. And they are going to be like Philip's daughters. Prophetesses. Doing things for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 37. She has children. I think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, I heard this, Terry. You will be Mary again. Terry, you will be Mary again. Hallelujah. For it was a terrible relationship. It was a terrible thing. And it left you bitter and hurt. And you had every right in the world's eyes to be hurt. But the Lord says you will be merry again because I'm bringing you into a state of merriness. I'm bringing you into a state of merriness and you will love again. Hallelujah. For I have a great thing awaiting you. Terry hallelujah hallelujah how we give the Lord praise and honor praise and honor I'm just trying to take my time just a moment just to see if we've overlooked anything and I keep hearing this name Keegan maybe it's Keegan 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 something Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will. Come on, just. Uh, I don't know someone watching me. It's either you or it's someone in your family. They are an engineer. They're an engineer. I don't know if their name is, is, is Matt maybe maybe it's maybe that but it's they're an engineer very intelligent very calculating in their thoughts do not worry because the Lord said I am going to speak to them and they will know the simplicity which is actually the great the great putting together of all life of Jesus the Messiah and in their heart they will have revival hallelujah to the Lamb of God hallelujah to the Lamb of God well a five-year-old named Keegan uh, is is Keegan a, a boy or a girl boy you said yes boy now why do I hear the name Russell I heard Keegan when you said it was a boy then I heard Russell <coughs> now is uh, do we know if Keegan's parents are together or they're divorced or they are together neither has been married before We need to pray right now. What is this I see about Keegan? I don't know. This is probably a tall order, what I'm asking, but Keegan's, 
I, this is live around the world. I'm doing this by cyber talk too. But is is Keegan's the parents, their parents. Why do I keep seeing this divorce? I keep seeing this something in a relationship thing. The grandparents are divorced, yes. On the grandparents are divorced on the mom's side. Yeah. <clears throat> Lord, we lift up Keegan to you now that the call you have on Keegan's life, Lord, will never follow. Yes, I will. For I heard the Lord impressing upon me these things, that this thing jumps a generation. This relationship strain, this divorce thing, it's jumping a generation. And it's going to try to jump this one and land in Keegan's life. And right now, this generational curse, we break it off of his life in the name of Jesus. His parents are going to have to serve the Lord. If they don't serve the Lord, then there will be only a temporary reprieve in that boy's life. Do you know what I'm talking about? They're going to have to serve the Lord and stop playing with television life. Television life. It's just a television life to them. They're going to have to stop playing with this. For Keegan is a chosen vessel unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Well, it's been a good 11th hour today. The Lord even gave personal words on a Around the World broadcast. Isn't that something? Hallelujah. I don't know who Russell was. And maybe it's a Mary tied to that Russell a Mary Russell or something but Lord I pray for all these that you have called today all the names you've called today and I give you honor and praise Lord for it and I ask you to fulfill in their lives things that you want done and I thank you for it in Jesus mighty name mighty name. I will, Lord. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Tommy! Yes, you! When I said Tommy, you looked. Bright-eyed. Yes, you! The Lord said, drop the marbles, quit playing like a child, and turn to me. Look at me. For a great bright future not only awaits you, but it awaits those that are connected to you. For a lot of the things I'm going to do with you will fulfill the promises that I promised them also. So turn now, drop the child toys and move toward me. For this is the time for you to experience adult life and experience life in the fullness For I have great things planned for you, Tommy. I have great things planned for you. Also, Tony. For these are the days of my spirit. Move into that. And let me show you my great and mighty hand. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. How we bless the Lord. Come on and let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. And I hear the name Rachel. 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 I heard the name Rachel. Rachel, I did not cause that man to hurt you so. I did not cause him to hurt you so. But I will heal every wound. I will heal everything. And you say, why did, why did this happen, Lord? Why did this happen, Lord? I didn't do it, the Lord says. But I will heal it. Hallelujah. For the Lord will pick up problems caused by the enemy and caused by other people. And he will make them right for you again. 
hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I know that this is going to sound generic, but it's not generic. There's someone listening, and you know who you are when I say this. You were very badly sexually abused as a young girl. And the Lord saw this. And the Lord has saw the scar you carried all these years. It's hindered you in love. It's hindered you in marriage. It's hindered you in business. It's hindered you in, with your children and everything. But the Lord said, today, throw up both hands, lift your eyes toward heaven, and I am going to shine on your face and cleanse your, your mind, your body, and everything that you feel that is so violated. The Lord said, I will make it all new today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for delivering people and for causing them to walk free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I will praise you, oh my God. Mm. Oh. I will praise you, oh my God. Oh, I will praise you, oh my God, forever and always. Mm. Always. Now, Lord, I thank you for today, and I ask you to minister to those, Lord, whether we call their names or not. Let them know how special they are to you today. And it's been our honor and privilege to be here with people from around the world in the United States calling on your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, who do we have watching today? People from where? Let us know where you're seeing from. I would like to, I got a postcard from someone in Germany I was looking at before I walked on the stage. I, I need, I'd like to have some of these. Uh, maybe we can read them sometime. They, I just, sometime, sometimes they're, they're, you write me things and I just sit and weep and, and just look at them when we're just in a private office and looking at these precious, you just, you're just so precious, and you, you write in, and we take all your prayer requests serious, and we take everything you tell us very serious. This is, this is what this is all about, is God ministering to you. Hallelujah. And it's, it's very much our privilege. Something? Come, come up and, and talk in the mic. Just use mine there. We have all over the United States watching, um, but we also have... Um, Ghana, Uganda, Namibia, Barbados, India, Canada, Thailand, Costa Rica, Italy, Brazil. We had our, and Ireland was watching today. Ireland, Finland. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Uh, we also had uh, South the couple from South Africa also watching today. And you said Uganda. Yes. You know we have a track there. Mm -hmm. You know that little track we have, Jesus, why it is the way it is. If I had one here, I could show it to you. It's free. We've never charged for them. Uh, one of the first languages was ever translated in was Luganda. Yeah. Luganda. Uh, Luganda. And, and it's inside the University of Uganda. And it, people don't know that. I, maybe I shouldn't have said that. But it's there, and people are reading it and coming to Jesus. It's also translated in Spanish. It's translated in um, uh, Romanian. It's translated in um, a Swahili. It's translated in Hebrew. It's, um, of course, in English. And we would like it to be translated in other languages. And maybe some of the nations watching could help us with some of that. If they'd write into the office and say, I'd like to translate it in our language, in the language here, or 
somewhere, then we could get you in touch with the people in the office, and maybe there's somebody could help us with some of that. Uh, we also had Nigeria and the Netherlands as well. Nigeria mm -hmm. and the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. All yeah. these nations, they get next to your heart real mm -hmm. quick. Honduras. Oh, they do. Yeah, Honduras, Colombia, New Zealand. Hallelujah. All around the world watching. Yeah, Norway. Is, and is I, I think we had someone from Q8 watching last mm -hmm. week or something, didn't we? Or Sunday or something. Mm -hmm. So from the top of the world, the bottom, and all the way around. Iceland. Hallelujah. Iceland. You know what? I just believe, God, that maybe we can bring a team. That we're, yeah. we're, we're just one day we're going to bring a team and come to where you are and have a live meeting together. If somebody like that, you know, let us know on this chat, man. Say, oh, yeah, I'd like for you to bring an 11th hour team and we just have a big prophetic meeting. Hallelujah. Oh, God bless you for watching and tuning in. Thank you so much. Send us your prayer requests. Let us know your praise reports. Show us these things, and, and, and when you write in to us, you know, I, uh, people that write in become partners to this ministry, I, I'm carrying your names with me. Uh, we're, we're putting it all we're in, in, in a form that I can carry it with me so I can pray over you every day. Every day I can, I can pull your names out of my pocket, hold them in my hand, and pray over you. And these are precious to me. Hallelujah. Now, we want to give you opportunity today to give on the 11th hour. Um, you know, sometimes when you give, there's prayer requests that, that people don't have any, any seed to sow for. You know, like if you, if you show yourself friendly, then you, will, you reap friends. If you, if you show yourself, you know, uh, you... You sow, you can sow things like that. You can sow for healing by praying for other people that need healing. You can say, this is my seed. I'm going to sow this for someone that needs healing because I need it or someone in my family. But there, there's things that you don't know what kind of seed to sow for. Uh, giving financially really can, can help in that matter. You say, well, how? Well, Remember uh, Corn Cornelius, the angel appeared and said, your giving and your, your alms and your prayers, your giving and your prayers has come up as a memorial before God. And he got his prayer answered because he was giving. And you could take that seed that you sow and name it anything you want and say, I sow this as a seed for maybe your children's education. Some of you are wondering, how am I going to get them through school? How is this going to happen? I'm a single mom or I'm a single dad. I, I need this. I need these things. You can sow for that. And I watch God do miracles all the time. And there's a miracle can come into your life today. So you don't want to just, as we used to say, you know, just bucket plunk and throw something in there for, <clears throat> as an offering because you think you should. You should never give like that. You should give expecting something. Give to the Lord because you love Him. But then as the seed is sown, believe God for a return. And we will be your two. If two of us agree on earth as touching anything, they ask it shall be done for them of our Father which is in heaven. And we will agree with you. Hallelujah. And if you don't have anything at all, that you can give. Man, take a button off of a shirt, your shirt. That's dear to you. And give it. Who knows? God may give you a shirt factory. I mean, he may do. If you ain't got nothing but an envelope, pray over that envelope and give it. God may give you a whole factory that makes envelopes. You don't know. But give it as a seed. So right now, since the altar has been prepared through the service, and you want to sow, it's time to give. Then I want to pray over your giving. I pray as you give. Luke 6, 38, it's given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And you say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done. In 
Jesus' name. Now, if you're a tither and you're tithing, tithing is an amazing thing. You know, the, one of the blessings of the tither says that God will open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. You know, there's only a couple times in the Bible that word windows of heaven are, are used. One was in Noah's day. It's when the windows of heaven were opened and that ark floated above all the trouble. Here is in Malachi 3 that the windows of heaven will be open to bring you above all the trouble. This is the tither's blessing. The devourer can be rebuked for your sake. So as you tithe, and this is, if this is where you tithe, then I want to pray the tither's blessing over you. Malachi 3, let's put it on the screen where everyone can see the Word of God with us. And we pray this over you right now. You bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in the house of the Lord. We prove you now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if you will not open them the windows of heaven, pour them out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and rebuke the devourer for their sake, that he not destroy the fruits of their ground, neither shall their vine cast her fruit before its time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations, all ethnic groups, all ethnicities, all nations will call them blessed, for they shall be a delightsome land saith the Lord of hosts. Now I expect these prayers to come to pass in your life. We are standing with you. We are standing with you as your two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, if you're giving, you could just, if you're watching me on RobinDBullock.com, you can see the button that says give and just click there and it'll take you to that secure place. If you're on YouTube watching, you can just look in the description there at the bottom of the screen and you can see where to go and give and you can give there. I want you to know it's our privilege and honor to be here every week on the 11th hour. Is there anything else that we need to that's on anyone's heart that we need? Because everyone that, that's on this team is prophetic. And I guess you can tell that. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's uh, he'll get it. Okay, go ahead. Check. I had wrote it down. Um, I heard it before we even got here this morning. I was, I was getting ready and getting prepared for the eleventh hour. So I'm just, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. What yeah. I heard. Um, I heard warriors and watchmen remove your heads from Delilah's lap. Your lust for her and her ways is causing blindness. And as she strokes your hair and gives you false comfort. She will soon uncover her knife, and you won't be able to see it coming. Wow. Hallelujah. Good is the word of the Lord. Good is the word of the Lord. You know, I was listening early this morning, and I was listening to one prophet saying, Watchmen, calling for the watchmen, and the watchmen have left their post. And he was calling for the watchman, and you could hear it, the Lord, as he said, Watchman, what of the night? There was no answer. Watchman, what of the night? There was no answer. Watchman, what of the night? Still no answer. It's time to get back up on your post as a watchman because there's whole cities whole fortified cities, whole communities counting on what you see as a watchman. Ministries, we have to have people watching to see what's coming so that we can do what we need to do. Hallelujah. So I encourage all the watchmen to get back on your post. I'm going to go ahead and say this. Don't get jealous over other people's calls. Don't get jealous over their calls. Some people, they kind of get kind of jealous, and, and they don't call it jealousy, but you say, well, well, you know, I'm prophetic too. I'm this and that. But don't start comparing your call to someone else's call. Don't do that because no other ministry, the Lord has a door for you. And if you will remain faithful, 
and you'll speak with the voice you have. The day will come sometimes overnight when your voice goes from just a few to thousands. Hallelujah. Stay faithful and just stay steady. Hallelujah. You don't have to get to validate your call. And you don't have to get somebody else to recognize it. You just do it, and God will see to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's been good to be with you today. Until the next time we gather together right here around God's Word at the 11th hour. Go back and listen to today over and over. Listen to the prophetic word that came forth today. Listen to that about when I was moving through time hearing these things. Listen to the first word that was given in the beginning and to this one again at the end. Listen to the, to the words coming off of the stage of the 11th hour. And God will add to it and show you more. Amen. And if the Lord leads you to pray for this ministry, pray for us. But pray the word. Pray the word over us. You know, that's all we receive is the prayer of the word. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, until next time, we gather together right here around God's Word. I want you to remember this. Never forget it, that God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom.